What, what's the new data from Israel that you mentioned, new data from a month ago that's much more compelling that everybody should be getting a booster? What is that? Yeah, the data. So Israel has been fairly aggressive. By the way, they've also been talking about fourth shots, in fact. But this was data presented that summarizes their third shot booster strategy. Remember, they primarily used Pfizer. So it's the same exact dosing as shots one and two administered to everybody, Becky, over the age of 12. They presented data for people over the age of 16 because they've had millions who have received those booster doses in that population, 16 and above, looking at everything from safety, but also significantly looking at reducing not just mild and moderate and severe infections, but also reducing symptoms. And in their kind of statement, as well as presentation of data tables, Becky, pretty compelling evidence that their third shots led to this decrease in Delta. When they started their booster program, they were a 99% surge of Delta infections. By the end of this kind of rollout, which they've recently completed and now have data to support, they almost suppressed the activity by two thirds. So could that all be the vaccine? No, but the majority of that is driven by booster shots and demonstrating so safety. Why isn't that <clears throat> more persuasive with the FDA panel? I think that, so the FDA panel yesterday brought up a couple of points. Number one, what really is the goal of widespread vaccination campaigns? It's really to keep people out of the hospital, keep people from dying. There's still clearly a debate about the merits for younger, healthy people under the age of 50, even Becky, hmm. to receive a booster shot to prevent what we would call symptomatic COVID. I think that's a critical kind of bifurcation in the debate around this. The second point that they brought up is that there's still not enough time that has gone by to look at safety signals, such as inflammation of the heart, myocarditis, because those can present several weeks after a booster is administered. And then the final kind of point was that, look, in the United States, we're not just administering Pfizer evenly across the country. We also have Moderna, we have J&J. &J, so we can't necessarily adapt one country's one vaccine recommendation to the rest of what we're doing in the United States. This is gonna continue to be a point though, Becky, because I've said it, I think other physicians have said it. We think all Americans will need a booster at some point. The question is when. Doctor, where do you land, though, on this issue? I was talking about this Israel data just yesterday on the broadcast because it really does reflect that you, you can try to put this out and do it successfully if you're willing to take the approach that the goal is effectively to avoid anybody getting it. And if you, yeah. if you can avoid them getting it, then you can avoid them spreading it, and it, it changes yeah. the dynamic of the whole thing. But then there's other people, as you said, who, who just are trying to avoid hospitalization or death or say, you know, you can go take therapeutics. Therapeutics right now will cost you $500 to take the therapeutic, will cost you $50 to take the vaccine. So I'm, I, as people think about both the health issues, but then also some of these behavioral science issues uh, right. behind it, where do you land? Where do you personally land as a doctor? Yeah, no, Andrew, I, I land on the side of vaccines as prevention and the benefits far outweighing the risks. I think that Exactly, not just the Israeli data, but let's be honest, even in the real world evidence that we're seeing, because we know millions of Americans are getting some of these third shots, even if they're not in the eligibility categories. And we also know that we're seeing steep declines as vaccination rates are coming up. And as we know that people are getting, Americans are getting booster shots. So I do fall into the camp of everyone is going to need a booster shot. And interestingly enough, the scientific discussion yesterday from the United States Advisory Committee, the FDA Advisory Committee, pointed to the notion that a booster shot can also help with that long-term memory cell immunity that we've put a lot of valid importance to. So this isn't just a booster for those antibodies that we've been talking about and measuring, but that there could be a booster effect to help your memory as well. So I fall into the camp of uh, everyone needs one at some point.